let's just sew whatever. Hey everybody, um, just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Lauren uh, Mormino. I run a business called Mormino. And um, I've been sewing for a business for about eight years now. And I've been making bags and accessories for five to six of those. Um, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make this really cute little zipper pouch using clear vinyl. Um, and it just takes one six by 12 inch ruler, which is awesome. I love one tool for everything. So there's the bottom. We use this really fun fabric from Michael Miller, this like comic book fabric. It's so funny. Um, so these are great for toiletries because it's lined with a waterproof canvas. Um, these are fun to store pretty much anything in because you can actually see what's in it. So you can actually use the measurements to make it smaller. You can, you know, pretty much do anything. It's just a quick little tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoy. Um, so I'm going to be using this quilting sewing kit that comes with pretty much everything you need for this project. It's got your rotary cutter, a ruler, and a cutting mat. Um, this is the Ulfa Splash Cutter. It is a 45 millimeter blade. Um, I have so many of these uh, because they're so quick and easy to use um, and they are a huge time saver. And this one's a really pretty blue. So the, the ruler that we're using is the six inch by 12 inch ruler. And this is gonna be just about everything. I mean, it's gonna have all the measurements we need, which is great. I love having one tool that I can use for multiple things. So the six by 12 is gonna be perfect. Awesome. And this is a self healing mat, which is awesome. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and start. I've got these really fun, like, comic fabrics um, from Michael Miller Fabrics. Um, gosh, these are just so freaking hilarious. I can't even... I'm not sure which one I want to use. I think I'm going to go with the more colorful one, but either way, it's you can't go wrong. So we're going to need two pieces of our exterior fabric that is six inches by 12 inches. And so you can kind of fussy cut using your ruler to decide exactly what parts are going to be shown. And since this is more of a comic book print, I may want to kind of line it up just right. I love this one that says my last piece of fabric. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna lay that down and use my rotary cutter along each side. Mm, beautiful every time, love that. Okay, so there's one piece. And then again, you can kind of fussy cut, see where you want to line it up. Super cool. Okay, so then we need to cut two pieces this same size out of our lining fabric and then two pieces out of a clear vinyl. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quick. So for the clear vinyl, I'm using one that I believe is about eight gauge. It's called like an eight gauge. It's pretty thick, but you could also repurpose a shower curtain from your nearest store, or you could reuse um, kind of what new sheets come in, those plastic bags, stuff like that. Um, and there's also places that have colored clear vinyl, which is really fun. So I'm just laying this down on my cutting mat and we'll trace around. Okay, 
So here is one of my clear vinyl pieces. I'll just scoot this down and I've got this nice straight edge already. So I'll line it up with that so you don't waste too much material. And there is my other piece of clear vinyl. So I just need to cut out my lining fabric and then it is your choice if you wanna use any interfacing on the bottom exterior fabric. I'm gonna go ahead and use a woven interfacing. So you could use woven fuse or SF 101, whichever you prefer. If you want it to be really sturdy, you could use craft fuse. Um, so 808 or 809, those are really great too. The lining fabric that I am using is called waterproof canvas. Um, you could use a canvas duck cloth if you prefer or can actually get that at your local fabric store. Um, but I order this online and it's great because it really is waterproof. Like I've seen water just sit on top of it. It does not soak through um, and it's quite washable, which is even better. So I'm just lining this up on my ruler like everything else. it out. So quick and easy. <laughs> okay, so I've got my woven interfacing. And for this, Again, I can just super quick cut out two pieces using the rotary cutter and my ruler. Um, earlier in the year, I was at my grandma's house and we were working on a project and she let me use her rotary cutter and I noticed it was an Ulfa from probably the 60s or so. And it was just so cool to see that she still had the same one because it still worked great. So, loved that. Okay. So that is everything that we need to cut out as far as fabric, interfacing, etc. Um, so now what we need to do is grab a zipper. You can also use zipper by the yard. You just want to make sure that your zipper is 12 inches or longer. Um, otherwise we're ready to go over to the iron to interface our exterior fabrics and cut out and sew it up. Well, cut out the corners. <laughs> We've already cut out the whole thing. What do you want, Ben? Interrupting, cat says meow. All right, so to fuse, we're gonna need our exterior fabric and our woven interfacing. So I'm just going to really quick press my exterior fabric to get out any wrinkles. You don't have to use any steam for this step. And then I'll take one piece at a time and fuse the inner facing. And you can do this with your fabric face up or face down. Because I iron so much stuff, I like to do it face down just in case there's any dirt or anything like that on your iron that could stain. Then I like to just move my iron slowly across. Make sure you're following the instructions on the interfacing, depending on what you're using. And then I'll give it one quick pass over the top. Okay. And then repeat on the other side.
And you want to make sure you're not working too fast and not like too sporadic in all directions. You want to kind of like slowly push out smoothly. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. And then again, just one quick pass over the top. And now they are fully fused. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little bit lazy with this step, but in a good way. And what we're gonna do is lay our two pieces together so that all sides are even. And then I'm going to take this ruler again and cut out my corners. So I'm gonna do an inch and a half. So there's my one inch, there's my half. And I'll just trace along the ruler. We could of course go back to our rotary cutter and mat but we could just as easily use scissors really quick. And these pieces that are left over, we're actually going to use as zipper tabs on our project. So I'm just gonna hold it together. I'm gonna use these precision snips and cut through both, both of these pieces at once. And then we're gonna do the same to our lining fabric or the waterproof canvas, whichever I mean, if your lining is waterproof canvas, then that's what you're going to use, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so there's our bottom notches. And we're just repeating that with the other side. You could use clips to help hold your pieces together if needed. And you can, of course, do one at a time. It's totally up to you. I always like to find little time-saving tricks, so that's why I do the two at once. And depending on which you prefer, you could use your lining fabric for your zipper tabs or you could use your exterior. Totally up to you. That's the fun of this project is it's just kind of a fun thing you can make that isn't too um, particular. Let's you be creative. All right, so now we're ready to get to sewing. Uh, I did prep my zipper, so I'm using Zipper by the Yard. I'm using this super fun rainbow with these cool zipper pulls that I sell through my website. So you can kind of see that my Zipper by the Yard is a little bit wavy. So what I like to do is just iron it really quick. You can use a little bit of steam, but it really helps flatten out. You can see there, not ironed. Up there is nicely ironed. So we just need 12 inches or so. We're actually going to cut it down to 11 inches. Um, so I'll just do that right now while my zipper is here. Probably shouldn't use these, but there we go. So now I'm ready to go because my zipper's all set. So we'll head to the sewing machine. Yay. All right, so I am at my sewing machine. This is a Juki DU1181 industrial sewing machine with a walking foot built in. Uh, this is not necessary for sewing this project. It's just what I find easier. As long as you have a domestic machine with a walking foot, you should be able to tackle this project. So I am actually gonna start by prepping my zipper. I'm gonna double check that it's 11 inches wide from end to end. It is, go us. And then I'm going to prep my zipper tab. So I'm gonna fold, this is a, that one and a half inch corner we cut out, so I'm gonna fold it in half. Either way, it's a square, so you're, you're right, either way you do it. And then I'm going to fold the raw edges in towards the center, and then fold it in half again. So we have raw edges on the sides only. And I'm going to insert my zipper to cover those ends and then top stitch. Oh, I lost my trash can, but that's okay. So here is what that ends up looking like. We're covering the raw ends of our zipper. So we'll repeat that step with the other side. Ooh, I could make a match, that's exciting. So this one here says, my last piece of chocolate. No. 
I mean, same though. That would be heartbreaking. All right. You can use your iron to press this. I'm just using my fingers to hold things in place. Not necessarily the best technique, but it works. Uh, if you trimmed your zipper down and it's starting to fray, you can take a lighter really quick at the ends very gently and that'll prevent any more fraying. A little pro tip. I don't think it's a pro tip. I think anybody would know that. I mean, anybody could know that. You don't need to be a professional. Okay. And then I'm sewing the other end. And I like to do a little back stitch at the start and the stop just to kind of secure those stitches. So there is our zipper ready to go. All right, so for the next step, you're gonna need your, basically half your bag. You're gonna need your top vinyl piece, your lining waterproof canvas, and your exterior fabric. So this part's really fun. So what we're gonna do is lay, we're sandwiching the vinyl in between the layers. Um, so if your print is directional, make sure you take note of that. So what I've done is I've laid my exterior fabric on top of the clear vinyl with the corners at the top, essentially. And then I'm going to repeat that with the waterproof canvas or lining fabric and clip it on as well. Okay. So you can see there's my clear vinyl peeking out at those corners and these corners are lined up. So we're gonna sew across the top edge using a, about a four or 4.5 stitch length. You don't wanna sew too small or you'll perforate your vinyl. So mine set at 4.5. And then as far as seam allowance goes, this is um, not too important because there is no set pattern, so long as you follow the same seam allowance throughout the bag. So if you're used to a quarter inch seam allowance, do a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm doing about a 3 8 seam allowance. Okay, and then stopping at the end. So there's what that looks like. And then we're going to pull these apart. Um, if you are using waterproof canvas and you're not sure which is the wrong side or the right side, there is this smooth, um, it's not waxy, but there's a smooth surface. That is the wrong side of the fabric. So the textured side is the right side. So now what we're gonna do is kind of separate this from one another. So this is the lining and this is the exterior. And you're gonna flatten it out. Uh, you can gently use your iron to do this. Make sure that you don't hit this clear vinyl, um, but you can also just kind of finger press or use a warm ironing board to press your project on. And that clear vinyl can be sticky, so just work slow, take deep breaths. So we've basically pulled them apart and we're sewing through that seam allowance. So cute. So there is the front ready to go. And there's the back. So then we're just gonna repeat these steps on the other side. Okay, so I've got my other side of the exterior done. So now we can start lining up our zipper. So we wanna center it out on the bag. Make sure you've got about half an inch or so, quarter of an inch from each edge. And I'm just lining it up at the top with the teeth facing down. So here it is from the interior side. You can see the, the teeth through it. So we're just going to sew across. And again, if you don't have a zipper foot on your, or a zipper foot, a walking foot on your machine, this gets to be a little bit hard and tricky with the um, vinyl. all my little x 
excess threads. Hmm. Ben, what? No, get down. Get down. It's an important video, Ben. Get down. Thank you. That's my cat. All right, so then we're going to flip this down so that the zipper teeth are facing up. And then we're going to top stitch through the back seam. And I like to do this by sewing from end to end. Oh, it's a little tricky. There we go. And if you needed help kind of folding that down, again, you can use a warm ironing board. Just make sure you do not put your iron directly on that vinyl or it'll just, it'll melt. It'll go bye-bye. <laughs> All right, so then I'm lining up the other side of our pouch with the top edge of the zipper. So right now, right sides are together. You can see my lining fabric here. And then I'll just clip I'm just using these hair clips. They're um, something I purchased off Amazon, but you can get them at a beauty supply store as well. So when I flip this over, again, you can see my lining fabrics and my right side fabrics are touching, exterior. And I'm gonna sew across the top using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And as you get closer to the zipper pull, if you need to, make sure you leave your needle in and then just pull your zipper away. That helps kind of get really close to your zipper. So then we're ready to top stitch that. So I'm just going to, again, fold this edge over. It's a little bit easier to do it while you're sewing. So I lay my zipper flat and then the vinyl on top of itself to kind of finish off that edge. And I'm sewing about an eighth of an inch from the top edge. So this part can be tricky. I'm not sure if you saw, but as I'm pushing down, it wants to stick to the, the table. So just make sure you're using light pressure and just kind of work one section at a time. Okay. And trim all your little excess threads. And then we're pretty, we're gonna put right sides together and sew around the lining. Yes. All right, so unzipping my zipper about halfway. We're gonna fold the right sides together and I'm gonna use clips that are a little bit sturdier at the top because it's a, a lot to hold. And then you wanna make sure that your exterior fabrics line up. I'm gonna use another clip there. And then the bottom should line up. And you will be sewing through your lining and your exterior all together. So I'm gonna start on one side, work my way down and around, and then we'll worry about squaring off the corners. Um, so yeah, you can just do that all in one pass. And I'm using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Back stitching at the start, coming down, back stitching where they connect the exterior and the lining. And then instead of lifting up my foot and cutting the thread, I just kind of 
squish the corners together. So you can see here, I'm just bringing this bottom corner to the other side. Back stitching where my fabrics meet. Slow, back stitch. Okay, and then we can trim all of our little extra threads. If you wanted to add a little D-ring so that it could have a wristlet strap or hang from something, this would be the best place to attach it to, right in through here. Make sure it's on your exterior though, so that when you flip it through, um, you know, it's on the exterior of your bag. Um, so since we left these threads here, it's gonna be a little bit quicker to square the bottom of this bag. So what you do is you just stick your hand in through the top zipper and kind of bring these seams together flat. And you can lay them open if you want, or you could turn them to one side. Totally up to you. I'm gonna just, just go ahead and turn them to one side. And we'll sew across the bottom. And if you wanna add a little bit of stability, um, or durability, I should say, you can add two lines of stitching, just one right after the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Just about an eighth of an inch from each other. And then trim all your little excess threads. Hopefully you can see one and two. And then if you decided to turn your seams all to one way, make sure you repeat that same seam on the other side. So don't do opposites, make sure they're going the same way, if you can. I can trim that excess fabric on the bottom edge off. Okay, and then we can turn it through because our pouch is practically finished. When using um, a thinner vinyl, you wanna make sure that you turn it nice and slow. You're not making any major creases or they may not come out. Okay, so I'm pushing along the bottom here. And then I'll push at the zipper tab, pushing that corner out. Is our finished little zipper pouch. Um, you can trim off the excess fabric on your seam allowances as well, especially if you've got some little fraying pieces. I'm just going to trim that. Um, but you could also choose to add binding to those raw edges. Um, but yeah, that is it for this cute little project. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there are tons of ways to kind of adapt this pattern to use um, more fabric. You can make it wider. You can make it taller. You could make it a deeper bottom here. Um, there's all different ways to make it your own. So I guys, um, so I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you so much for watching.